All right, so uh, let's do this quick and dirty. Uh, normally, I don't do Wednesday and Sunday night because I got stuff to do, um, but then I got home, started looking at the news, and there was a lot of stuff to go on. So uh, opportunity is king, as as always in fantasy football, but uh, the cruel mistress is the queen uh, uh, you know, efficiency. So uh, the big news today is uh, Cam Akers got traded from the Rams to the Vikings for six or whatever conditional picks. Uh, doesn't probably matter to me, um, but you do you and you run your roster. So it, it's probably similar to the uh, DeAndre Swift situation with the Eagles where uh, the Rams get him off the roster. And then if he signs someplace else in free agency, uh, the uh, Vikings get the comp pick. Uh, I don't think it's that big of a deal. It is a pretty good indication in my mind that the Vikings don't believe that Madison is the solution and neither do they think more importantly, Ty Chandler is the solution. So, you know, uh, uh, Ty Chandler being a lead winger is probably out the window at this point. They're going to figure out running back by committee. I would guess. Um, the other news of the day is that Kareem hunt, uh, he went ahead and signed, let me pull him up. Uh, he went ahead and signed with the, uh, Browns, this isn't to be uh this isn't unexpected. Um I put my money where my mouth is. I went and dropped a boat on uh Jerome Ford. I got him in one of my leagues. Um I I don't think this really does a lot. Uh I can imagine that Kareem Hunt will take on the Kareem Hunt role from last year, but it'll just be Jerome Ford instead of Nick Chubb. Um and Kareem Hunt wasn't very the, the metrics already with Kareem Hunt where it wasn't that he was already inefficient last year. He's a year older. He couldn't find anybody to sign them. Uh and it took an injury for him to be brought into town to be like the compliment complimentary back to to Jerome Ford. I, I don't see that being a big issue. Jerome Ford probably projects someplace as like a middle of the road RB two to maybe if we're lucky a high end or low end RB one, um, and I don't think Hunt's role changes anything in that. Um, the the big loser in this is Pierre Strong. You know, if there was a chance that Pierre Strong could take his opportunity and run with it, it's probably gone. the The chances that Kareem Hunt takes the opportunity and running with it is probably small because he couldn't do it last year; wasn't very efficient. And Jerome Ford is 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 a a fine running back I've never said he wasn't um jerome Ford is probably a better receiver than nick chubb was which kind of hurts cream hunts forte so like i mean it, it doesn't really change what jerome ford was gonna be he was always probably not gonna get 100 percent of the work because there's only like two guys in the league that are doing that so th this doesn't really do anything for me uh derrick henry good old king henry himself uh mispracticed today uh, limited or excuse me, limited practice participant with a, I think I have it written down with a toe injury. Um, so you know that Ty J, uh, Ty J Spears thing is probably a, a thing that we're looking at. You know, so if you don't have them, uh, I do in at least one league. So uh, in the other league, it just you're you're just getting to the point where like bench space, Henry owner. Um, you know, learn from Nick Chubb. So, uh, what do we got next? Oh, Kendra Miller, the stash of the week. Um, I wouldn't be too worried about uh Alvin Kamara potentially coming back because Alvin Kamara works best in a complimentary role with another running back doing a lot of the dirty work. Um, Kendra Miller's like, I think he's okay. I mean, I, I think a lot of guys are aren't special. Um, they, they, they do what they do well and they don't do what they don't do well, not well. And Kendra Miller's another guy like that. Like he's big, he's fast, he can catch. Um, I don't know how much good football player he is, but it looks like he's going to get all the work this week. Uh, what do I have written down? So, uh, Tony Jones Jr. got elevated. He was the guy who got all the work last week when Jamal Williams went down. Tony Jones is just a guy. Jamal Williams probably is going to miss some time. The big issue that I that I saw today, this is part of the reason why I was like, hey, I got to go live. Taysom Hill missed practice to some degree with a knee injury. So now we're getting to the point where like this is this is the opportunity that Kendra Miller, a third round draft pick. I mean, this is the story of how he gets in there. Um, and if he's not just a, a one week uh, you know, a winner, then then he's going to be a complimentary back once uh, Alvin Kamara comes back, because, again, 
Jamal Williams and the hamstring, the way that the hamstrings are getting handled now is it's better to be a week too late than a week too early. So, you know, who knows how long Kendra Miller can come in and be in that like, you know, flex to, you know, low end RB2 role. Uh, Austin Eckler is still a DNP. So Kelly is still a thing. Uh, Justice Hill for uh, the. Let's see. That's not the hill I want. Justice Hill for the Ravens. Um, he missed practice. He's expected to miss uh, week three. They signed Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake looked good for him last year. So of all the guys uh, with the uh, Ravens that I'm kind of maybe sort of interested in, it would be Kenyon Drake at this point. And, and I think Kenyon Drake is probably like a little past his prime, but like whatever's going on there, um, you know, just stashing the cheapest guy, I guess. Um, let's see. Uh, I read someplace that some beat writers talking about Roshan Johnson in uh, Chicago. Uh, don't be surprised if he takes on the the, the lead role. Um, and, you know, like like I said, with that, with Roshan, like if you're a Roshan truther, good for you. I still think it's a hard road because they uh, Roshan's going to need red zone opportunities. The Bears don't look good. Uh, Justin Fields need to become a good uh, NFL quarterback. Uh, Roshan would need the receiving work to go along with that. Uh, with with whatever you know actual rushing prowess because he, again he's really good at running the football I'm um, just not going to get a, a lot of run run uh, red zone opportunities and passing work um, and again like stuff like this coming out is another indication that if you're gonna buy like buy now like don't wait you know the, if you're gonna do it pull the trigger um let's see saquon was is ruled out they were trying to say that like he might have a chance to play on uh Monday night, or excuse me, on Thursday night, um, he's ruled out. Breda is supposed to get the the bulk of the starting work, um, but they're also expecting Gary Brightwell, who I think is just some guy, and Eric Gray. Eric Gray is the, the stash, um, in my opinion, because of the fact that like if there's a guy who could take that opportunity and run with it, it's it's Eric Gray in the same uh, same capacity that Kendra Miller could take the, the opportunity with, with the Saints, at least for a few weeks. And the other thing to be aware of in all this, the way I look at it, depending on what's going on with my roster and my opponent's roster, is these are good guys to stash because these are Hell, hell Marys that my opponent can throw out there and put into a lineup and, and, and you know, a couple guy, a couple, a couple opportunities in the red zone where they fall in the end zone and you just lost your week because you didn't, you didn't, you know, stash a guy as a block. Um, so uh, Devin A. Chain, you know, the guy that I'm going to champion because I think he's really good at football. Um, he's still a thing. Uh, Solomon uh, uh, Solomon Ahmed is probably going to miss the week three with a groin. Uh, coach came out, coach speak, uh, praised uh, Devin A. Chain. It's still a hard road for him to be fantasy relevant, and I, I'm probably not even stashable at this point because even if Mostert goes down, Jeff William uh, Jeff Wilson's coming off IR, but it's just one of those things to like be aware of that like a change still a thing. You know, opportunity is king, and a guy goes down, and and there's there's his opportunity as the RB two, and the coach says, hey, maybe we should get him the ball a little bit more often because he's good at football. Uh, Isaiah Pacheco in Kansas City was mispracticed with a hamstring, and again with the way that. Uh, they're dealing with hamstrings now. Uh, better be a week late than a week too early. So uh, not practicing Wednesday. CEH is a thing. Uh, McKinnon didn't play very much last game. I could probably pull him up, but I don't care. But the, the thing is, like, CEH is a thing. Again, these are just more blocks and stashes, um, it, depending on how bad you're hurting at the running back position. Um, Aaron Jones for uh, – Green Bay, he was not a thing today at practice. So if you're an Aaron Jones owner, like hopefully you own A.J. Dillon. A.J. Dillon didn't look particularly good. Um, then we get to all the fun news with uh, the Lions because there's a little bit to go over here. Pull up David Montgomery. So you're just staring at David Montgomery. So David Montgomery was a DNP. Uh, that's not surprising um, with his thigh bruise, contusion, whatever. Um, Greg Reynolds right now is the block. I, I don't know how much I would be comfortable 
uh, playing him um, unless I'm really hurting. Uh, I don't think uh, Gibbs is going to get a, a lot of the workload, but I could see them trying to get the ball to him more because he's he's just good. Um, Zahneman Knight signed with the uh, he signed with the Lions. Zonovan Knight played well last year in uh, limited action with the Jets, so he jo- he's he's on the full fifty three man roster. Um, so this is he would he would project into that David Montgomery role. So I don't know how much he's going to actually be in action this week because that Craig Reynolds is kind of that grinder, but Zonovan Knight would move into that role and if they're moving guys on their roster they're doing stuff like this it's kind of an indication that in my mind that david montgomery is going to miss more than a couple weeks um you know again the number is four because once you hit the four you're on short-term ir so the other thing is divine of zigbo uh got signed to the practice squad so they're moving guys up they're making sure that their running backs are in order design uh divine of zigbo was the guy that was supposed to start for the Jags, the year that James Robinson went off. So he he's kind of a physical specimen, but they're they're getting this in order because it does look like that they're gonna they know that they're gonna be a, a guy down for a little bit of time. And then um final news that I have written down today. Trying to get this quick and get this out. Miles Sanders uh limited at practice, and remember, like all good things. Uh, opportunity is the king in fantasy football. And Chuba Hubbard, if you, he's not already stashed in your league and you're not a Miles Sanders owner and already don't have him on your bench, Chuba Hubbard has been very, very efficient, being the queen, with his limited touches. He's doing like 37% of snap share. Him and Tajay Spears right now are like, you know, the, these are these are high-end handcuffs. These are Jerome Ford type guys. If the ball bounces a particular way. Uh, Elijah Mitchell in San Francisco off the top of my head. Um, so this is the the indication that if this guy's not rostered, he should be in my mind. And the big issue with me is like, how do I, how do I clear the roster space to get all the, the right guys on my roster? 